Today on Amazing Dinosaurs, we are checking out an Iron Man versus Jurassic World Epic Evolution Collection. We're gonna be facing all of these dinosaurs off against Iron Man. Let's first start by checking out the Iron Man figure. And here is the figure. I believe it stands at seven inches tall. And this is a pretty intricate and very well detailed figure. It is super adjustable. You can move basically all of the joints like you could in real life. And it's got some pretty great coloring too. You've got the silver, of course, the bright red, and then the gold. And all in all, you know, I'm uh, pretty impressed with this figure. Plus it came with some extra accessories that we will check out in a bit. But now it's time to meet our first epic evolution dinosaur of the collection. This is the Jurassic World Neovenator. And as part of the Epic Evolution series, you can see that this dinosaur lives in what looks like a area with rivers and mountains. And right off the bat, I do like the coloring of this dinosaur. It's pretty different compared to many of the other species that I have, with the dark blue, green, gray, and then the yellow on its face. And since this is from Epic Evolution, it has an evolving ability with this little dial on its back that you spin, Let's check out and see what happens. Lifts up to its head for a chomping action. And then right on top of its head here, you can see some spikes that you can actually just pull out for the evolving for its battle mode. Those are some crazy looking spikes. Kind of looks like a mohawk in a funny way. And now it's time for the first face-off of this collection, the Neovenator versus Iron Man. And it looks like they are right about the same height. The Neovenator is a little bit taller with these spikes, but when you lower it, it's a little bit shorter than Iron Man over here. And for the most part, they've got different color combos going on. The Neovenator with some cooler tones and Iron Man with the red tones, but they both have that yellow gold coloring. Now, who do you think would win in a battle, Iron Man or the Neovenator? The next epic evolution dinosaur is another big one. This is the new Gigantic Trackers Triceratops. Now this Triceratops has quite some different coloring and texturing compared to many of the older Triceratops figures that I have. The packaging says that this Triceratops lives in the mountain regions, possibly where there's snow, so it makes more sense that it's more light colored to blend into those lighter surroundings. And what's really interesting about the texturing on this figure is that it kind of has like these huge armor plates all over its body compared to older Triceratops that have just more normal skin texture. Now this figure has an attack feature. There is the dial on its back, like all the epic evolution figures that you spin let's see what happens looks like it has a head ramming action right there so these two horns on the top of its head are its main attack weapons but there's actually more since it's an epic evolution triceratops there's actually a hidden thing that you can push up on its frill to reveal more spikes on the top of its frill for its battle mode. Now it's time to face off against Iron Man. Now it looks like Iron Man is a little bit taller than the Triceratops figure, maybe just a couple inches. However, I think that the Iron Man is a lot more lightweight than the Triceratops. Let's lift this up. Oh yeah, the Triceratops is maybe two or three times the weight of the Iron Man figure. And like the previous figure that we just saw, the dinosaur has the more cooler tones of coloring going on. And Iron Man over here is in contrast to that with the bright red, gold, and silver. Comment below, who do you think would win in a battle? epic evolution dinosaur that I just bought is this Megalosaurus dinosaur. Now this dinosaur is the first of these three that has the more warmer coloring. So this one is in a brown, orangish color. You can see it's got some yellow detailing on its back, on its neck. And one of my favorite things about the new Epic Evolution series is that they have rubber teeth that look way more realistic. And of course, it's got the dial on its back there for the rampage action. 
Gauntlets face off against Iron Man. Iron Man is still the taller in this competition, but let's see who weighs more. Let's see the Megalosaurus, pretty heavy because it's got a speaker and some batteries in there. And then Iron Man here, you can see that I actually added a stand so that he can stand up a bit more easily. But I definitely have to say the Megalosaurus wins in the weight competition. It is definitely a lot heavier. And while we're here, why don't we go ahead and give Iron Man these different hands. These are open hands. And here is how Iron Man looks with the open hands configuration. Much more ready to fight and to grab onto the dinosaur. Who would win, Iron Man or the Megalosaurus? Comment below. Next is another brand new figure. This is the Wild Roar Griposuchus, or Griposuchus. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce it. Now this dinosaur reminds me quite a bit of the Sarcosuchus, which as you can tell by the name, they are actually related. So this is a super long dinosaur that lays close to the ground. As the packaging says, it lives near or in the water and it's got that action dial on its back for the attack. Wow, check out those teeth too. They're so small, but they look extremely deadly. And now for the face-off, the Griposuchus versus Iron Man. And obviously, Iron Man is way taller, although if you stood up the Griposuchus like this, it is way taller than Iron Man now. And in terms of the weight, let's see here. I'd actually say they're almost identical in weight. And the Griposuchus has this really cool attack feature, but Iron Man still has more points of mobility for posing. Comment below, would Iron Man win in a battle or would the Griposuchus? Next is another epic evolution figure that I just bought. This is the Danger Pack Poposaurus. This figure is definitely the smallest out of what we've seen so far, and it's got those cool blue coloring with the gray underbelly, but it also has some warmer orange-brown coloring on its tail and on its face. Now let's face off the Poposaurus versus Iron Man. Now the Poposaurus is a lot smaller. It doesn't even reach the top of Iron Man's legs, and from that you can definitely assume that the dinosaur figure is a lot lighter weight than the Iron Man figure, but it's actually, it's not a huge difference. And from that, you can expect the Poposaurus to be a whole lot lighter weight than the Iron Man figure, but actually it's not a huge difference. So this figure must be a lot more dense than the Iron Man figure. But both these figures are looking pretty cool. Now who would win, Iron Man or the Poposaurus in a fight? But before we do that, why don't we add on this other accessory for Iron Man? You can see some flames, so I think you know where this is going. epic evolution dinosaur is the Allosaurus figure. I've had this figure for quite a while and it is one of my largest Allosaurus figures. It once again has these really cool realistic looking teeth. It's got the evolution feature here on its back with this little button here that you press and these spikes will pop out. And then it also has the dial on its back for chomping and roaring. It's time to face off against Iron Man. This time, the dinosaur is standing way taller than Iron Man. And it's not only taller, it is certainly a whole lot larger in all aspects. Let's see how heavy the Allosaurus is compared to Iron Man. Now, uh, you know, they're pretty close, but I still think the Allosaurus is the heavier one. Now, who would win in a battle, the Allosaurus or Iron Man? This is the Ecrixinatosaurus dinosaur figure from Epic Evolution. It's got the gray body with some light blue striping on its back and its neck and the darker face with these two small horns in the front and a bunch of smaller horns right behind. And by using the dial on this dinosaur's back, you get the chomping action and the roaring sound effects. Now it's time to go up against Iron Man. But wait, I've actually got a little surprise. And that is I actually bought another Iron Man figure that we'll check out right now. 
This set also comes with a Tony Stark and a suit. Although I gotta say, that doesn't really look a whole lot like Robert Downey Jr. But the even better part is the Mark I Iron Man suit. This figure is pretty detailed, pretty intricate. It really looks like it's made out of metal, although it is just made out of normal plastic. Although it's not quite as poseable as the other Iron Man that we have, it's still pretty adjustable. You can move the shoulders, you can twist the arms, you can twist the torso, and even for a big clunky suit, you can bend the knees and move the legs. Plus, it actually comes with this little fireball that you can insert into the launcher, and then you can pull it back and launch it away. So now let's have this Mark I Iron Man face off against this dinosaur. And now these two figures are pretty similarly colored, both with the dark gray, although the Mark I Iron Man is a lot more reflective and shiny compared to the dinosaur. Now comment below who would win, the Mark I Iron Man or the Ecrixinatosaurus? This next epic evolution dinosaur is actually an herbivore. It looks pretty similar to a Stegosaurus, but is actually called a Hesperosaurus. It's got a dark green body with some lighter detailing, and its plates along the top are a brighter green color. So with all this green, I would assume that this dinosaur lives somewhere in the jungle or maybe a swamp or something like that. And this figure has one action button using this little dial button on its back. You can swing the tail back and forth. So now let's face off against the Iron Man Mark I. First off, I think the Iron Man stands a little bit taller than the Hesperosaurus. But that being said, the Hesperosaurus definitely is a whole lot bulkier, and I would assume is the heavier of the two. So let's find out, and let's check out the Iron Man. Oh yeah, the dinosaur is maybe two or three times the weight of the Mark I Iron Man. But that's probably because there's batteries and a speaker inside this thing, so that makes it a lot heavier. Now then, who do you think would win the Mark one Iron Man or the Hesperosaurus. Next, I'm showing you two new dinosaurs at once. This first one on the left is called the Avaceratops. It's got a dark brown body with some white detailing on its back and then the white frill and then two tiny horns on the front. And then this other figure on the right here that looks kind of like a Stegosaurus is called a Tojangosaurus. And this one has a more tan coloring over most of its body with some darker detailing along the top of its back and then the orange plates running all the way along its back to the spikes on its tail. Plus, when you press down on this figure on the front, it actually swings its tail back and forth. Now let's face both of these dinosaurs off against the Mark I Iron Man. The Iron Man is obviously a lot taller, probably twice the height as these dinosaurs, but I wonder if the weight of these dinosaurs combined beats the Iron Man Mark I suit. And I think it does, just by a little bit. Now then, who do you think would win, Iron Man or these two dinosaurs? Here are four dinosaurs all at once from the new Epic Evolution Collection. This first one on the left is a Plesiosaurus. Now Jurassic World has released this dinosaur before, but this is with new coloring, a whole lot darker than previously. Next to that, we've got the Guebasaurus dinosaur. And this one has some pretty cool coloring with this green on its back and then the black on its legs, neck and face and a little bit of a white stripe along its side. I like that it has all these little spikes on its head and it actually has a chunk action when you press down on its body. Then there's these two dinosaurs that actually came as a pack when I bought them. This first one is called the Eoraptor, obviously related to a Velociraptor. It's a whole lot smaller of a figure, but it has some cool coloring with the bright red on the front and all these spikes along its head, and then the dark green in the back. And then this little dinosaur is called the Steguros. I would guess that it's related to a Stegosaurus. It looks kind of similar. It stands on four legs, and it has all these spikes in the back, but it's a whole lot smaller obviously, but I do like this little green stripe that's running along its face and its side. Now it's time for the face-off against Iron Man. Four dinosaurs versus Iron Man Mark I. Now you probably remember the Mark I suit wasn't super advanced, so I don't know how it would do against four dinosaurs at once, especially one that's aquatic. I definitely don't think this suit would do well in the water. But let me know in the comments, who do you think would win in a battle? These four dinosaurs or the one Iron Man suit? And finally, let me know in the comments, which of these figures did you like the best? The Tony Stark and the Mark I Iron Man, 
or the much more advanced Iron Man suit that comes complete with a stand and even flames to put on the shoes and the hands. Let's get started with the Dino Trackers because those are the newest figures. This first one is the Diablo Ceratops. It's got some crazy horns in the front and some unique dark red coloring. Plus it has an action button on its back to move its head back and forth. This is from the Gigantic Tracker series. This is the Stegosaurus. It's got some pretty bright coloring all over its body. You can see there's all sorts of little specks of different color in there as well. And it comes with this awesome Dino Tracker backpack. And it has two action buttons. One swings the tail up and down, and the other swings the tail back and forth. <laughs> Next up is another gigantic tracker. This is the Sino Tyrannus. It's got a dark green body with some red detailing on its tail, on its neck, and on its head. It comes with these interesting binocular light type of things. And it has two action buttons on its back. One moves its head, and the other moves its tail. Next up is the Track and Attack Endoraptor. This is one of the newest Endoraptors released. If you pull on its arms, it moves its head. And it has a button on its back to open its mouth. Check out that awesome reflective blue coloring too. Here we've got the Dryptosaurus from the Dino Tracker series. This figure is mostly darker in colors, but it does have tons of spikes along its body. And it has a dual action button on its back that you can use to move its head back and forth. This is the Chronosaurus from the Dino Tracker series. It is an aquatic dinosaur, so it's got four fins. And this figure also has the dual action button on its back to move its head back and forth. And next up for the Dino Trackers, we have the Austroraptor figure. So this figure is in the same family as a Velociraptor, but you can see it has a much longer and narrower snout. And on this figure, you can adjust the tail, the legs, the arms, the neck, and the mouth. <laughs> All right, let's check out this new Dino Trackers set that I'm adding to my collection. This is the Search and Smash truck set. Let's first check out this Atrociraptor. It's about the same size as some of the other mini Atrociraptor figures that I have. It's got some pretty unique coloring though. It's got some bright red orange coloring along the front, while the rest of its body is a soft tan color with a little bit of black on the top. And this set actually comes with a tracker that you can put right on to the Atrociraptor. Check that out, it's pretty cool. This set also comes with a soldier who's got a brown vest and also a weapon. And the biggest part of all is this Jeep. And it has a special feature where you can press down on the hood and it'll actually capsize. And next up from the Dino Trackers is the Elephrosaurus. This figure's got some soft blue coloring with some green detailing, and it's got a real mean looking face. All right, moving on to the Roar Attack series. We've got the Baryonyx Chaos figure. This figure has some bright blue detailing along the top of its head and a slide lever action for the sound effects and chomping action. Here is our first Allosaurus figure. This figure has the brown body with the blue detailing along the top, it's got some little spikes running down its spine, and it's got the slide lever action on its back for the roaring and sound effects. Next up from Roar Attack is this Ceratosaurus figure. It's a bit smaller than the Allosaurus figure. It's got the red and black coloring along the top, and of course the slide lever action for the chomping and the roar sound effects. This next figure is actually a Mega Destroyer figure. This is the Carcharodontosaurus. It's got an action button right on its back for the chomping. And you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail too. 
Here's another Mega Destroyer Carcharodontosaurus. It's pretty much the same aside from this awesome coloring. It's got the blue and the orange and brown, and of course the action button on its back for chomping. Here is the next Roar Attack Allosaurus. This one has the dark green, white, and red. You can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. And it has the slide lever button on its back to activate the sound effects. Here is another Mega Destroyer. This is the Pentaceratops. And this figure is quite large. It's got the soft brown body with the gray detailing and two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down and the second swivels its entire torso back and forth. And these are probably some of the largest horns that I've seen. This is the Roar Attack Kentrosaurus. It's got spikes all over its body, but the coolest part are these huge spikes coming right out of the side. And you can actually swing those spikes back and forth using this slide lever action. This is the Mega Destroyer Stegosaurus figure with the camouflage green, tan, and brown coloring. And it's got the hidden action button that you can press to swing its entire torso and its tail back and forth. And those are some pretty long spikes too. This is the Ceratosaurus figure with the dark green and black coloring. It's got the tiny little horn on its head and there's a slide lever action for the chomping and sound effects. This one's an interesting looking dinosaur. This is the Oranosaurus from Roar Attack. It's got a huge spine running along its back and a slide lever action on its side to move the head up and down. This next figure is Ankylosaurus Bumpy. It's got the huge shell on its back, the spikes coming off the side, and a slide lever action to swing its tail back and forth. And last of all, we've got Baryonyx Limbo in the green, dark green, and brown coloring. You can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, and you can use the slide lever action to open and close its mouth. First up, we've got the extreme chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It's a medium-sized T-Rex figure, and of course it has the button on the top of its head for chomping. Next up is the Primal Attack Control and Conquer Carnotaurus figure. It's got a bright orange-red body, and it has a chomping action as well as a head-moving action. Here is the epic Roarin' Tyrannosaurus Rex figure, and it's one of my favorites. It's quite a lot larger than the T-Rex that we just saw. It's got a light brown body with the dark brown on top, and you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw. This next ginormous figure is the Destroy and Devour Indominus Rex. This figure's even bigger than the T-Rex figures that we've seen, and it has two actions. First, it has an arm attack, and it has a roaring jaw action. And now let's grab this huge aquatic dinosaur. This is the real feel Mosasaurus figure. This dinosaur was one of the stars of the first Jurassic World movie, and you can open and close its jaw, move its fins, and as you can tell from the name, it has a much more lifelike feel than many of the other figures. It's a bit softer. Up next is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. Now this T-Rex may look similar to the previous ones, but it has a totally different attack. It has a Terran attack with its mouth. See how its neck twists all the way to the side? And it also has a secondary button for swinging the tail back and forth too. This figure is really wild. This is the Primal Attack Massive Biters Tarbosaurus. Got a ton of crazy spines running all the way up from its head to its tail. It has some pretty cool coloring. I like how it's subtle along its body and then bright red along its neck. And it has a jaw chomping action too. 
This figure is another Primal Attack massive Biters figure. This is the Seats Miko Rerum, and it's got some pretty crazy coloring and details. Check out all those little spikes right on the top of its head and on its back. And of course it has some super bright orange and blue coloring too. And best of all, it has a jaw chomping action as well. Up next is the Primal Attack Control and Conquer Carnotaurus Toro figure. It has a dark brown body, a lot darker than the Carnotaurus that we saw earlier. And it has the jaw chomping action and the head moving action too. <laughs> This is another Massive Biters from the Primal Attack series. This is the Albertosaurus figure. This figure is pretty recognizable because of the green all over the body with the orange stripe on both sides. And of course, it has the jaw chomping action and the head moving action too. <laughs> also from the Massive Biters toy line is this Sarcosuchus figure. This figure is really long. It's probably around a foot in length. It's got all sorts of texturing and detailing. You can see two rows of spikes right on on its back that go all the way down its tail. And of course it has a long and narrow snout, very similar to an alligator's, and it has the jaw chomping action too. Aww. Here is the Primal Attack Sound Strike Majungasaurus. And as you can hear, it comes with sound effects, although it seems to be a little bit broken at the moment. This is a bit smaller of a figure, but it still has some really cool coloring and tons of little spikes and details all over its body. And while there's no button to open and close the jaw on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around. Up next is the Primal Attack Sound Strike Irritator. This figure has a similar body shape to a Baryonyx, although it does have a little spine that runs down its back. And on this figure, there's no button to open and close the mouth, but you can use the tail to move the head around. And check out those sound effects too. Here's another Primal Attack Sound Strike figure. This is the Sinoceratops. And this figure comes in the light gray with some tan detailing. The coolest coloring and detailing is this bright orange and yellow along its face and the super black eyes. And this figure has a head attack action. Check that out. And sound effects too. Next up for Primal Attack is this Sound Strike Parasaurolophus figure. It is bright yellow, it has some reflective pink along its back and its legs. And the best part is that it has a head attack action. Also from the Sound Strike series is this Pteranodon figure. This version is in the dark orange and maroon coloring along its wings. And it has two action buttons, one to operate the mouth with sound effects and the other button to operate the wings. Here is the Primal Attack Sound Strike Cryolophosaurus figure. There are other versions of this dinosaur, but this one is in the bright yellow, brown, and orange coloring. And there is no button to open and close the mouth, but you can use the tail for a head attack action. Here's another Pteranodon figure from Primal Attack. This one has some even cooler coloring, I think. While it's mostly brown, it has some really cool green striping along its wings and a darker green coloring along its face. And just like the other Pteranodon figure, there's one button to operate the mouth and another button to flap the wings. Here is the Primal Attack Edmontosaurus figure. This figure stands on all four legs. It's got some light tan and dark green blue coloring with the brightest coloring along its face. And like many other figures, this comes with a head attack feature. Now here is a Savage Strike figure. This is the Styracosaurus. It's a pretty small figure. This version comes with the light green and brown with the bright orange and yellow detailing along the face. And this figure has a head thrash attack that you activate by pressing on the tail. Up next is the Pachycephalosaurus figure from Savage Strike. It's colored bright green on the underbelly and orange along the rest of the body. And it has a head ramming action that you activate by pressing on the tail. Up next is a Velociraptor figure from the Attack Pack series. It's dark blue with some red detailing along the top and it has a fully poseable body. From the Savage Strike series is this Velociraptor Charlie figure. It's bright green and has some darker green along the top. And the coolest part of all is that this figure has a claw slashing action by pressing this button on the top. Check it out, here's another Velociraptor figure from the Savage Strike series. This is Velociraptor Delta. This Velociraptor is colored a much more dark blue green color, but just like the other figure, it has a button on its back for the claw slashing action. 
Over here I've got two different Stiggy Malak figures. This one is from Jurassic World and this one is from Camp Cretaceous, both from the Savage Strike toy line. They've got quite a bit of different coloring along their whole body, but they both still have that super hard shelled head for headbutting with the spikes right along the back. And both these figures have a head ramming action when you press down on the tail. Next up from Camp Cretaceous Savage Strike is this Plesiosaurus figure. It is way smaller than the Mosasaurus figure that we saw earlier. It's got a much longer neck and a mouth that you can open manually, and there is a button on its back to move the flippers up and down. Here is a wild looking winged dinosaur. This is the Tapihara from the Savage Strike series. It's got some crazy cool coloring and texture detailing along its wings and a super bright head and frill right on the top of its head. Plus there's a tiny little button on its back to flip the wings up and down. I've got two other winged dinosaurs. These two are from the Attack Pack. And I believe they are called the Ramphorhynchus dinosaur. One of them's a bright green color with some darker green on the body. And the other figure has some white, dark blue, and orange. And both of them have a super long and narrow snout with tons of huge teeth inside. <laughs> This is the Sauropelta figure from the Savage Strike series. It's got a fully armored body all over and it's got tons of spikes along its shoulders and it has a spring-loaded spike attack action. Next up is a Dilophosaurus figure from the Savage Strike series. This figure features the giant frill right beside its head and an attack button when you press down on the tail. Here is the Minmi figure from the Attack Pack series. Like the Sauropelta, it has a fully armored body and it's got spikes all over its back instead of the large ones on its shoulders. This next figure is from the Attack Pack series too. This is the Trudon. It's got a pretty small body. It has an interesting spine running along its back and on the top of its head too. Here is a Dimorphodon figure from the Attack Pack series. It has bright orange and red on the underside of its wings while the rest of its body is a dark green color and you can manually open and close the mouth too. Next from the Attack Pack is this Herrerasaurus figure. It's got some pretty bright coloring with the soft green and darker green and light blue coloring right along the top, and this figure is fully posable too. <laughs> also part of the Attack Pack series is this bright green Draco Rex. There's some gray striping along its back and on its legs, and it's got tons of spikes along the back of its head. This is the Calavasaurus figure from the Attack Pack series. It stands on all four legs and has three different colors. It's got bright orange on the top, some light blue along the tail, and the rest of its body is a dark blue color, except or its mouth, which is bright blue again. And finally from the Attack Pack series is this tiny little Ornithosceles figure. Most of its body is a dark brown color. It has some yellow detailing along the top with the gray underbelly. This dinosaur really looks like it could run fast. <laughs> This first figure, however, is not from Dino Trackers. This is actually part of the 30th anniversary Jurassic Park collection. This is the real feel T-Rex figure designed to look like the old Jurassic Park one. The skin on its body is soft and rubbery and it actually can eat smaller dinosaurs and store them in its stomach compartment. Next up is the Dino Trackers Endoraptor figure. This version is slightly larger than many of my other Endoraptor figures and it has some roaring actions with its arms and it has an action button on its back too. Here is the epic attack Carnotaurus figure. It's around the same size as many of my other Carnotaurus figures and it features the red body with the brown top and a single action button on its back to operate its jaw. But best of all, there's these action buttons on its side for more sound effects and lights too. Here is the Dino Trackers Diabloceratops figure. It comes in the bright red coloring over all its body and has some massive horns and it has an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. 
Next up is the Dino Tracker's Sino Tyrannus figure. It comes with this cool headset that you can take off of the dinosaur figure, and it has some pretty cool coloring, and it has two buttons. One activates its head, and the other button activates its tail. Right over here is the Dino Tracker's Eo Carcaria. This dinosaur has feather texturing over all its body. It's got some pretty bright coloring and the bright red along its face and an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. This is the Gigantic Tracker's Stegosaurus figure. It has some really cool coloring over all of its body. It's quite different from all the other Stegosaurus figures that I have. And of course it comes with the Tracker backpack and two action buttons on its back. One swings its tail up and down and the other swings it side to side. Here is the Dino Tracker's Nigersaurus figure. This dinosaur stands on all four legs and has some pretty bright green on the front and darker green in the back. And there's one single action button on its back to move its head back and forth. Here's our first aquatic dinosaur of the collection. This is the Chronosaurus. It has the dark blue top and the yellow underbelly, and you can adjust all its fins and its tail too. And it has a single action on its back to operate its jaw. Next up is the Edaphosaurus figure. It looks pretty similar to a Dimetrodon with a huge spine on its back and standing on all four legs, but its spine is even a bit larger than a Dimetrodon's. And with this figure, you can use the tail to move the head back and forth. All right, now it's time for some ones that I haven't even opened up yet. This is the Orcoraptor figure. This is a pretty bulky looking figure. You can see that it has some feather texturing along the underside of its body, but not really along the top. You can tell that it's kind of a skin texture. And kind of like the Therizinosaurus, it has these huge claws on its hands. It's got some pretty bright accenting design on its tail, but not really anywhere else, which is interesting. But there is some right around its eyes too. And it looks like the arms, the legs, and the tail are adjustable. And there's an action button on its back to operate its jaw. Next up of the unopened figures is this Irritator figure. I think I have one or two other Irritator figures, so I'm excited to add this to my collection. All right, here it is. And I gotta say, it looks even a bit different compared to my other Irritator figures. Its legs seem to be a lot shorter, whereas its body is super long. It has this really long tail. And of course, it still has the spine that runs from its back down its tail and it has some pretty cool coloring too, with the dark brown in the back and on its legs, the orange in the middle, and then some bright green along its head and its neck too. And it looks like its arms and its legs and its tail are adjustable. And there's that single action button on its back to operate its jaw. And the next unopened figure is this Regalus Ceratops. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So obviously it looks quite a bit like a Triceratops. It stands on all four legs. It's got the horns on the front, as well as these additional horns along the top of its frill. And it's even got some spikes running down its back and its tail too. This is a pretty bright dinosaur as well. Most of it is that yellow color. It has some green along its face and along its back. And it looks like all four legs are adjustable. You can twist the tail around a bit. And it has an action button on its back for roar sound effects. Up next is the Dino Tracker's Dryptosaurus figure. It has fairly dark coloring with the dark brown over most of its body and then the green accenting on its arms and on its tail as well. And boy, does this figure have tons of spikes along its body. And there's the action button to control the jaw and the sound effects. <laughs> Over here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. It features a fully poseable body on all of its limbs and has the classic blue coloring with the white stripe and the gray underbelly. Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Concavenator. It too has a fully poseable body with all of its limbs and it features some pretty cool coloring with some bright orange along parts of it, the dark blue, the lighter underbelly, and some cool detailing around its eyes. Here is the Dino Tracker's Zunoceratops figure. This version of the Zunoceratops has the brown body with some tan and black along its neck and an action button to activate its head. 
This next Dino Trackers figure, I believe, is called the Elephrosaurus. It features a bright blue body with some yellow accenting along the side and a darker face with some horns on the top. And it looks like its whole body is adjustable as well. The arms, the legs, the tail, the neck, and the jaw. Here is the Dino Trackers Herrerasaurus figure. And this Herrerasaurus looks quite a bit different compared to the older versions by Jurassic World. It features poseable arms, legs, and tail and an action button on its back for the chomping. This next figure is the Dino Trackers Austroraptor. This version features the tan body with some brown detailing and some brighter coloring around its head. And overall, it's shaped like a Velociraptor, but the biggest difference is the shape of its head and its jaw. Here is the Dino Trackers Strike Attack Gigant Spinosaurus. This figure looks kind of like a Miragaya with the spines along its back and the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders, but it has a different shaped head and and this one has the orange coloring in the front and the tan in the back. Plus it has an action that when you move its head back and forth, it moves its tail too. Aww. Next up is the Dino Tracker Strike Attack Dilophosaurus figure. This figure has very muted colors. It only has white, some black as well. And I think that's pretty much it. But it still has this really cool feature that when you move its tail, it activates its frills. <laughs> Now here is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus figure. It looks quite a bit different compared to the Strike Attack figure that we just saw. But this figure is actually pretty cool because you can actually remove the frill to reveal just the head by itself. Which apparently is a more realistic look for the Dilophosaurus in real life. Back here is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. It features the fully poseable body, has some pretty cool coloring over its whole body, and of course has the little horn on the top of its head. Here is the Dino Trackers Baby Brachiosaurus figure. I have a few other versions of this figure, and this one is in the brown coloring with the tan accenting along its back. Here is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure, a little bit larger than many of my other Dilophosauruses. And interestingly, on this figure, you can't move the frills at all, but there is this action button on its side to activate some sounds and some light effects. Looks like here's another Zunoceratops figure from Dino Trackers. We've seen this one already. This one from Dino Trackers, I believe is called Geniodectes Cirrus. Features some bright coloring with the yellow that runs from its tail through its underbelly up to its face, and then the brown along the rest of its body. And it has an action button on its back to operate the jaw. Next up is a miniature Hammond Collection Velociraptor figure. It of course is extremely poseable all over its body. It has a single stripe that runs down its entire side and it's got some cool blue coloring right around its eyes too. And finally, here is the Dino Trackers Strike Attack Atrociraptor figure. This Atrociraptor has some bright yellow along the front and then the back is a dark green color. It's also got some reflective silver coloring right around its eyes and a single action button on its back to operate its head. First and biggest dinosaur in this entire collection is this Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's got an amazingly detailed body with the coloring as well as the texturing all over. It's got some amazing marbled eyes and a pretty realistic mouth too. We're gonna set that right here as the biggest dinosaur. Next up, also from the Hammond Collection, is the Carithosaurus dinosaur. Also stands on two legs and has some pretty cool yellow coloring with the gray striping and a red crown on top of its head. And here it goes, next in size. Next up in the collection is the Hammond Collection Metriacanthosaurus figure. It has tan coloring with the brown striping and some dark orange along its eyes and at the front of its face too. Now let's go ahead and set that up next in size. 
Here is the Hammond Collection Parasaurolophus figure. It is also mostly tan colored, but it's got some purple striping and orange right along the top. And of course the huge horn on the top of its head. So now let's put this one also in line and grab our next one, which I think is the Ceratosaurus from the Hammond Collection. This dinosaur is colored pretty classically for this species. It's got the tan body with the brown striping and then the red along the back all the way up to the face. Now let's put that in line as the next largest one and let's grab our first Amber Collection figure, which is a Velociraptor figure. I believe this is the generic Velociraptor from the Amber Collection, so it doesn't have a name, but it has some pretty cool coloring with the bright orange and the brown striping. So now let's go ahead and put this one in line and let's grab our next Amber Collection Velociraptor and this one does have a name. This one is Velociraptor Charlie. This figure also has some pretty bright coloring. This one is bright green instead and a little more faded green striping along the top. And it looks like it actually has a headpiece. I think that might be a camera, just like in the movies. So now let's get this one next in line, next to the orange Velociraptor. And here is the next Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This is Velociraptor Delta. And the coloring on this figure is a bit different than the two that we've already seen. These two ones are more like stripes on its back, but this one has more of like speckles on its back. It does have some striping as well. So this is a really cool blue green color. So now let's put this Velociraptor in line and grab the next Amber Collection Velociraptor, which is this one. And this is Velociraptor Echo. This Velociraptor has probably the most classic coloring out of any of these other Velociraptors with the brown on the sides and then the black along the top. So now let's put this Velociraptor in line and let's check out the next and one of the coolest Velociraptors. This, of course, is Velociraptor Blue. It has the iconic stripe running down from its tail all the way up to the top of its head and it has some glowing gold eyes. Now let's set this up in line and grab our next figure, which is actually not a dinosaur, but a human. This is the Amber Collection Owen Grady figure. Looks like he's wearing the dark brown vest, blue shirt, and has a pair of jeans on. So now let's put this very fittingly right next to Velociraptor Blue. Next, why don't we open up a brand new one? This is the Amber Collection John Raymond Arnold figure. And check that out, it looks like it even comes with the torn off arm as well. Let's open it up. First off, here is the John Arnold figure in his lab coat. You can see a Jurassic Park logo right on his shirt. And it looks like it actually comes with a computer set for this figure. So let's check that out. Check that out. This is all one piece, and this is the computer that he was working on in the movie. It looks like there's also a headpiece that you can have for him to put on his head, just like that. And there's an extra pair of hands, and the weirdest part, the coolest part, is this torn off arm right here. Let's check that out. Now it looks like you can't obviously put it back on the figure because it already has two arms, so it's a separate piece. But that's pretty cool. It's a funny little addition to this set. Now let's go ahead and set him up next in line and let's grab our next Amber Collection figure, which is this Dennis Nedry figurine from the first Jurassic World movie. He's wearing a blue lab coat. It's got a blue sweater underneath and the brown pants. So now let's go ahead and set him next in line here. And next up is the famous John Hammond from the Amber Collection. And you can see that he's got his classic cane with the mosquito right on the top of it too. Now let's go ahead and set them up in line and I had to sit these down because sadly they won't stand up on their own on this grass here. But let's grab our next dinosaur, which is this scary looking dinosaur. This is the Hammond Collection Irritator Dinosaur. It's got some really cool yellow striping and the rest of its body is a brown color and it's got this dark black color along its face and a bright red crown on the top of its head. And we're gonna go ahead and put that next in line, right next to John Hammond. Next, we're gonna go with the Hammond Collection Spinosaurus. But wait, this isn't actually a Spinosaurus figure. This actually used to be a Hammond Collection Baryonyx. You can see that the spine is actually custom made and put onto the figure, and the rest of the figure was repainted to look like a Spinosaurus. So we're gonna put this one next in line here. And here we go, here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx, the normal figure. Over here is the Spinosaurus that was remade from it, 
and this is the original version. It's got the dark blue coloring with the gray and the white striping and a little bit of reflective blue coloring right underneath its eye. So now let's go ahead and set this up next in line here. For the next figure, we've got the Hammond Collection Concavenator figure. This has some really amazing coloring with the dark blue along most of its body and the orange on its tail and a little bit of red on its face. And now since we're running out of room on this end of the table, we'll start a new line in the front right here for the next biggest dinosaur. Coming right up is the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. This is pretty classic coloring. You can see that it's mostly brown. It has different shades of brown on different parts of its body. And a really cool part that I like is that it shows a lot of wear and tear on its horns, which I think gives a lot of detail to it. So we're gonna put that next in line, right next to the Concavenator. And here is the Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus figure. This figure is much larger compared to my regular Ankylosaurus figures, and it has some different coloring too. It's like a dark green along the top, it has the tan gray spikes, and then the lighter underbelly as well. And check it out, you can even open and close its mouth. All right, now let's put that right next to the Triceratops figure. Now here is a really cool figure from the Amber Collection. This is a Pteranodon. And now it's actually got rubberized wings, so it's actually pretty flexible along its wings, whereas its body is still the hard plastic. So why don't we go ahead and put this right next to the Ankylosaurus figure. And now we're gonna open up our next new figure set. This is the Amber Collection Dimorphodons. So let's check it out. Now here is the first Dimorphodon. It looks like it is in a standing pose. You can see that its wings are flapped shut, so it's actually walking along the ground. And you can still open and close the mouth and move the neck around and all of its body parts still. And here is the other Dimorphodon. This one is in a open-winged flying pose. It's got some pretty cool shading along its back and along its wings, and you can pose basically every part of its body too. Now let's set these two down next in line. First the standing Dimorphodon, and then the open-winged flying Dimorphodon. Next up is the Hammond Collection miniature Velociraptor figure. This one has some gray coloring with white striping and then some blue and red along the top of its head. So now let's go ahead and set that up next in line. And next, I've got a Dimorphodon figure here. This one's actually pretty recent as well. Now this Dimorphodon figure actually has a removable frill, which unfortunately is a little difficult to take on and off, but it's still a pretty cool feature. And we're gonna put it right next to the Raptor. And to finish it off, I've got some of the miniature figures from the Hammond Collection. First off is the Ellie Sattler figure right here in the red sweater. There's also another Dennis Nedry figure from the Hammond Collection this time. There's the Alan Grant figure in his adventure outfit. And finally, another John Hammond figurine in the same costume. First and largest is the Ruthless Rampage Allosaurus figure. This figure is one of my largest Allosaurus figures and features updated coloring. It has some darker brown along the bottom and sides and then this blue on the top. It also has its evolving spikes on its back that you can pop out and there's a little spinning dial on its back for the chomping and sound effects. And one thing you'll notice about the Epic Evolution Collection are these new style of teeth. They're rubber and they look a whole lot more realistic. So let's put this Allosaurus over here as our biggest dinosaur. Next in size is this gigantic Trackers Neovenator dinosaur. And this is quite a different looking dinosaur. It has some pretty cool coloring with the teal and the purple mixing. It has these evolving spikes that you can pull right out of its head. And you can move the arms and legs on this figure. And then there's the dial on its back for the chomping and attack actions. 
So we're gonna put that right next to the Allosaurus and you can already see the size difference between the two. The Neovenator still is a pretty sizable figure, but it's probably maybe half the size of the Allosaurus. The next dinosaur in this epic evolution collection is the Wild Roar Megalosaurus figure. I don't have that many dinosaur figures that are in this interesting brown orange coloring as well as the yellow dots on its back. But you can move the arms on this figure, you can adjust the legs, and then there's the dial on its back for the chomping, and this one comes with sound effects. <laughs> Now let's go ahead and put this Megalosaurus in line next to the Neovenator dinosaur. And it looks like both dinosaurs can be kind of around the same height, but you'll notice that the Neovenator dinosaur is a bit bigger in the body overall. So you can see the size difference between the two right there. The next biggest dinosaur is this Wild Roar Ecrixinatosaurus dinosaur. Personally, I think this looks quite a bit like a Scorpios Rex dinosaur in its height and its body shape. And this dinosaur figure features the gray body with the light blue striping along its back and its neck and then the darker detailing along its face and check out all those spikes along its head and just like the others you can move the arms the legs and you can actually twist the tail on this one and then there's the dial on its back for the chomping actions this one's got sound effects too so let's place the Ecrixinatosaurus next to the Megalosaurus. Check out that size difference there. Very similar, but a little bit smaller. Now here is our first quadrupedal dinosaur of this epic evolution collection. This is the gigantic Trackers Triceratops, but this is no normal Triceratops. They designed this new figure quite a bit differently than the old versions. Look at all this armor plating and the design of its skin all over its body. That is quite a bit different compared to a normal Triceratops. Now since it's a Triceratops, it of course has the three horns on the front of its head, but there's actually some hidden spikes that you can pop out of the top of its frill so it evolves for added defense. And then there's the dial on its back for a headbutting and stabbing action. Now let's place this Triceratops next in line, next to the Ecrixinatosaurus. And you can see the height difference between the two right there. The Triceratops is a little bit smaller. However, in terms of body size, I think the Triceratops is the winner. You can see the difference in the shape of the body between the two. So the Triceratops may be larger overall, but it is the shorter dinosaur, and that's how we're ranking them here. The next in size is a dinosaur that looks kind of like a Stegosaurus, but is actually called a Hesperosaurus. It stands on four legs, it's got this dark green coloring with the brighter green along its plates, and it has the spikes at the end of its tail, similar to a Stegosaurus. And you can adjust both the front and back legs on this figure. Sadly, you can't move the head or the neck around. And don't forget that this one also has this spinning dial on its back, but this time it activates its tail for a swinging action. So let's place the Hesperosaurus next to the evolving Triceratops. And you can see that the Hesperosaurus is only slightly shorter than the Triceratops. And I think that Triceratops definitely has more body mass than the Hesperosaurus. But nonetheless, it is the shorter one, so we'll place it right here. Now this next dinosaur is not from the Epic Evolution Collection. It's actually from the Legacy Collection. But I just bought it and I wanted to include it in this video anyways. This is the Momenchisaurus dinosaur. So let's open it up and check it out. And here is the full-size dinosaur. It hardly even fits across my table. It is so long. This figure is 49 inches long and might rival the Dreadnoughtus dinosaur that I have that is also super long. And the coloring looks a little different compared to many of the other super-sized dinosaurs that I have with this brown striping that goes all the way down. And I think it has a much smaller face compared to many of the other quadrupedal giant dinosaurs that I have. Now this is obviously the largest dinosaur so we're gonna put it at the very front up here. Here's that Allosaurus that we saw at the beginning, and now let's compare that to this huge Momenchisaurus dinosaur. Look at that, its head is way up there. Next up in size is the Poposaurus dinosaur. This dinosaur is specifically from the Danger Pack toy line, and it features some gray-blue coloring with some orange-brown detailing on its tail as well as its face. And you can move the mouth, the neck, the legs, and the arms, but sadly there is no action feature feature for this dinosaur. So let's place the Poposaurus next to the Hesperosaurus and check out that size difference between the two right there. The Hesperosaurus is way taller, both in height 
and in body mass. Next up in size is another Stegosaurus looking dinosaur. This one is called the Tojangosaurus. This figure is from the Strike Attack toy line. It features some pretty cool coloring with a light tan that fades into the darker with the black and then its plates are this orangish brown coloring. And since it's from the Strike Attack series, when you press down on its body, it has that hidden attack feature. Look at that tail spinning. So let's place it next in line, next to the Poposaurus. And looking at the size difference between the two, they're very similar. The Poposaurus, I think, is a little bit taller. And in terms of body mass, I think the Hesperosaurus might be a little bit larger, but they're quite similar. Next in size, also from the Strike Attack toy line, is this Guebasaurus dinosaur figure. It's got some pretty different coloring with this dark green along its back and sides and some black on its legs and on its face. And once again, since it's from the Strike Attack series, it has a hidden attack. When you press down on its body, it has a chomping action. So let's place it next in size next to the Tojangosaurus. And looking at it, it looks like the Tojangosaurus's plates are a little bit taller than the height of the Guebasaurus right here, but they're really close either way. So I'm gonna put it side by side regardless. Next up is the Eoraptor dinosaur. Now this dinosaur actually came as part of a pack and we'll see the second figure a little bit later on since it is a smaller figure. But this dinosaur's got some pretty cool coloring. It's got the dark green in the back and then a super bright red along its arms and face. So we're gonna place that next in line next to the Guebasaurus. And you can already see the size difference between the two of these. The Guebasaurus is maybe twice the size of the Eoraptor. Next up, we've got another quadrupedal dinosaur. This is an Avaceratops dinosaur figure. This one is from the Danger Pack series, which features mostly these smaller type of figures. And this species has the two horns on the front. It's also got the frill like a Triceratops and some dark brown coloring with the lighter detailing on the top and the lighter frill and face. Now there is no attack feature on this dinosaur, so we're gonna go ahead and just put it next in line next to the Eoraptor. And once again, you can see that they are quite similar in terms of height, but obviously the Avaceratops is way larger in terms of body mass. But we'll put it next in line here since it is a little bit shorter than the Eoraptor. Next up is a quite large dinosaur, but it is very short and that's why it's next in line. This is the Gryposuchus dinosaur and it looks pretty similar to a crocodile or actually a sarcosuchus as well, which I have some figures of. And it's fairly adjustable. You can move all the legs back and forth and it has the spinning dial on its back for the chomping action and the sound effects. So we're gonna place the Gryposuchus next in line. And sure enough, it is actually a little bit shorter than the Avaceratops. But obviously in terms of body size overall, the Gryposuchus is a little bit larger. Next up is our smallest figure yet. This is a Stegoros dinosaur. And this dinosaur was actually the second dinosaur that came in a pack with the Eoraptor back here. Now this is a quadrupedal dinosaur, and although the name sounds like a Stegosaurus, I don't think it looks a ton like one, but it does have the spikes on its tail. So let's place this next in line and look at the size difference between the two of them. The Gryposuchus is way larger in body mass, but in terms of height, there's actually not a major difference between the two. And now for our final dinosaur in this epic evolution collection is this Plesiosaurus figure. This is the only aquatic dinosaur in this collection and it is from the danger pack so you can move the jaw open and closed you can move the neck as well as all of the fins and I do have some older versions of a plesiosaurus figure very similar to this aside from the coloring so let's go ahead and place this next in size next to the stegoros and you can see that in terms of height there's not a huge difference between these two dinosaurs and although the plesiosaurus is a lot more spread out I don't know that there's actually a huge difference in body mass either. So let's get these back in line with the Plesiosaurus at the very end. And that is my entire epic evolution collection from biggest to smallest. And of course, with this gigantic dinosaur from the Legacy Collection. Now, what dinosaurs do you think I should check out next? Let me know in the comments below. first super colossal figure in this collection is the Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the soft green coloring with the black detailing all over its side and its back. It's got a pretty large spine running along its back and some really cool teeth in its mouth. And you'll see that many of these super colossal figures have a stomach compartment. So why don't we go ahead and feed this Giganotosaurus some miniature dinosaurs.
And let's set it on the left side right over here. Next up is the super colossal Velociraptor blue figure. This one might be one of my favorite super colossal figures. It of course has the iconic blue stripe running down the side. It's got some huge claws on its hands. And this raptor figure actually comes with more colored eyes than many of the other super colossal figures. So let's set it next to the Giganotosaurus and let's feed it a few miniature dinosaurs. Next, I've got a custom colored Endoraptor figure. Now this figure was actually originally a Velociraptor blue figure, but it was custom colored to look like an Endoraptor. And as you probably noticed, I've got the real Endoraptor super colossal figure that we'll check out next. So of course you can see that these two are identical in size and shape, and the big difference is the coloring. You'll see that the Endoraptor still has the gold stripe pretty similar to Velociraptor Blue over here. Now let's give it a few miniature dinosaurs to eat. And let's move on to the next one. Here it is. It is time to open up the brand new super colossal Dino Trackers Endoraptor figure. And here it is, the newest super colossal figure that Jurassic World has released. And this is a totally new design. It's not a copy of the T-Rex figures or the Raptor figures. First of all, it's got these little spikes on its back, which I think only the Indominus Rex super colossal figures has. It of course has the gold coloring running along its side all the way up to its neck. Looks like it has smaller claws than the Raptor figures have. And then on the face, it's got some more spikes behind its head right here. It's kind of a soft rubber. It's got some dark red eyes and some really interesting looking teeth. These are really long, and some of them are actually kind of sticking out to the side, which is pretty unique. I don't think another super colossal figure does that. Now, when we compare it to the custom colored one that used to be a raptor, looks like this figure's face is maybe a little bit larger than the raptor version. Its teeth are definitely a lot more prominent. And yeah, look at that. Here are the raptor's claws, and then this is the endoraptor's claws. So quite a bit shorter. But all in all, I'd say this is a pretty awesome figure, and I'm super excited to have it in my collection, finally. The next figure here is a custom colored Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It features a bright red coloring with some yellow detailing right along the black, and some pretty cool shading and texturing all over its face. Its teeth are a bit gritty looking, like it's been in battle. Overall, this is pretty awesome. Now let's feed all three of these because I think I forgot to feed all of them. Next up, why don't we grab another T-Rex? This figure is another custom colored T-Rex, but this one is in a blue-gray coloring. It has some bright red eyes and some darker gray teeth. And other than that, I think it's pretty much the same as this other T-Rex over here. And let's give it a few mini dinos for it to snack on. Next up, why don't we go with the Endoraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. It features a similar body as the raptors that we saw earlier, although it does have some different texturing and bumps along its body, and the top of its head is different too, I think. And just like in the movie, it has the white body with the brown and light brown striping. Now let's set this up next in line, and let's feed it a dinosaur. Next up, we've got the Indominus Rex Super Colossal figure. This one, I believe, came as part of Camp Cretaceous. It's got some pretty cool spikes and bumps on its back and the larger spikes right on the back of its head. And similar to the new Endoraptor Dino Trackers figure that I've got right over here, this Indominus Rex also has the teeth that stick outside of its mouth and are a whole lot larger. Now let's set it in place next to the Endoraptor and let's feed it a small dinosaur. Next, we're gonna go with the super colossal Carnotaurus Toro figure. This figure has some different coloring than all the other super colossal figures because it has the clay red coloring and the brown top. And just like the Indominus Rex, it has a bunch of bumps and spikes along its back. But even better, this figure has two horns on the top of its head. Now let's set this Carnotaurus up next in line and let's feed it a snack. 
The next figure I'm showing you is the Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure is also pretty recent compared to many of these other figures, and it features some unique coloring compared to all the other super colossal T-Rex figures that I have, with the dark brown and the black on top. And like all the other T-Rex figures, it has a row of clean teeth on the top of varying sizes, and then a row of smaller teeth on the bottom. So next, let's feed it a small dinosaur. This next figure is one of the longest Jurassic World figures that I have. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. I mean, this figure is crazy. Look how long its neck is, and there's its body, and then a super long tail. It just keeps going. And I think that is pretty amazing. It's crazy that they came out with a figure this large. And it's still detailed enough that you can even open and close its mouth. Next, we're going with another T-Rex figure. I think this figure might have been released as part of the Fallen Kingdom collection, either that or maybe Camp Cretaceous. And this T-Rex features the light orange coloring and it gets a little bit to a darker brown along the top of its body. It has some nice shading and detailing along its face. It's got the yellow eyes and of course the teeth, very similar to the Dominion T-Rex's teeth over here. And here's its little dino snack. Next is the Jurassic World Dominion Brachiosaurus figure. And this figure might be the tallest super colossal figure that I have in my collection. Look how much taller it is compared to the T-Rexes. It features some speckled coloring along its back and it has the lighter underbelly that goes up its neck and then along its face, it has some pretty cool reflective blue paint. Plus you can open and close the mouth too. Now let's set this next in line and move on to our next figure. Next up is another T-Rex figure, and this one might be my favorite T-Rex figure because of its camo green coloring and its huge battle damage on the side. I doubt you'll be able to find a T-Rex with this type of coloring because this T-Rex was custom colored. So I think it actually used to be an all orange figure. I think it was actually this figure. You can see that it does have some battle damage right there. And in this custom colored painting, they actually just colored that in and added a bunch other cool details too. But sadly, this figure is really old. So as you can see, a lot of its teeth in its mouth are actually broken. But that doesn't mean it can't enjoy a little dino snack. And finally, I've got the Jurassic World Dominion Apatosaurus figure. As you can see, this figure stands a little bit shorter than the Brachiosaurus figure right here and the Dreadnoughtus figure right here, and definitely is not as long as the Dreadnoughtus figure. And it features the camo green coloring with some lighter detailing along the top of its back. It's got all those stripes and a little tiny head up front that you can turn and move around and even open and close the mouth too. And that is all of my super colossal figures. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. First up, we've got some new ones that I just bought that we're gonna check out first. First one is the Endoraptor. So this Endoraptor figure is probably medium sized, not as big as most of the T-Rex figures. It's got the all black body with the gold striping right along the side, just like the movies. And this figure is super poseable. You can move basically every joint in its body as you could in real life. You can open the jaw, the neck, the arms, the legs, the tail. It's got two joints. It's got some quills on its back and on the top of its head too. And of course, it's got those red eyes. Next up, we've got the Dino DNA Lab Kit with the Dimorphodon. Let's open it up and check it out. All right, here we go. So here is the Dimorphodon. It's gray in color, and then it's got that maroon purplish coloring on the bottom of its wings and it's pretty adjustable. And we've got the Dino DNA kit. Comes with the slime too. Let's go ahead and put this in. All right, here's the slime and it goes into the canister. Oops, didn't quite fit. 
and then you stick this dinosaur skull into the slime. And there you go. It is now on display. Plus, you can actually open up the canister to let the goo slide out of the side. That's pretty cool. And next up, we've got another Dino DNA Lab Kit. This is the Velociraptor Pack, so let's open it up and check it out. Here is the Velociraptor. It looks like it is in a sneaking pose, crawling along the ground. It's got a light green color, and it's pretty poseable with all its limbs and jaw. And of course, you've got the DNA kit right here. Let's put that slime in. And finally, let's put the skull in. Looks like this kit comes with the same skull. And there we go. Exact same as the other one. It's got the opening on the side to let out the goo. And you can close it back up and put it on display. Next up, we've got the Legacy Collection Extreme Chomping Spinosaurus. This has the dark green body and the iconic red along the spine and the face too. And of course, it's got that chomping action. This is the Thrash and Throw T-Rex. This dinosaur can be controlled by moving its tail all around to control its neck, its head, and its jaw. Right over here, we've got the giant Mosasaurus figure. They've actually come out with a new one since then that has different coloring. But this is the original one for Fallen Kingdom. This one has a lighter blue coloring on the side and the top compared to the newer one and the white underbelly. And on this figure, the tail actually doesn't move. That's only with the newer Mosasaurus figures. Here, we've got the basic figure of the Endoraptor. It has the same awesome coloring as the one we opened up earlier, but the limbs cannot move around as much. As you can see, you can only move them somewhat. You can't move the elbows, you can't move the knees. It's kind of stuck in this crawling, sneaking pose. This is the Action Attack Suchomimus. It's got a bright blue color on the bottom and the sides and the yellow detailing on the top. And it's got one action button on its back for chomping. Next up is the Roarivore Allosaurus. It's got the gray body with yellow detailing on top and you can move the arms and the legs and there's an action button on its back for chomping the jaw. This is the Roarivore Ceratosaurus. It has a light yellow body with the black and red detailing on the top and the iconic horn right there on its nose. Plus it's got an action button on its back to chomp the jaw. Right here, we've got a basic figure of the Dilophosaurus. It's got the soft green body with the red frills. And you can open and close the frills and move the limbs a little bit, but they're not very adjustable. This is another basic figure from Jurassic World. This is a Velociraptor with the orange body and the brown top. And just like the Dilophosaurus, the limbs are slightly adjustable, but it's pretty basic. Way down here, we've got an extreme chopping T-Rex. This is part of the Legacy Collection, I believe. And it has the orange body with the light underbelly. It's got the button on the top of its head for chomping. Here's one that I actually haven't shown that much. This is the Tyrannosaurus Rex Anatomy Kit. As you can see, you can take it all apart and check out its insides. See, it's got, I think that might be the stomach, that's the intestines, you can see the muscle of the tail, you can see the bone behind it, and even on its leg that you can take off, you can take this apart and see what's inside. So there you've got the bone, you've got more muscle, it's pretty cool. This is the Action Attack Carnotaurus. It's got the dark red body, lighter underbelly, and it's almost like a purple color along the top with all of those bumps along its spine. And this dinosaur has a jaw snapping action. It's really fast. This dinosaur is the Action Attack Stegosaurus. It has a light blue body with a darker blue along the top, and this figure has a tail swinging action. Next up, we've got the Roarivore Cynoceratops. This dinosaur has some pretty cool patterning along its whole body. I really like that orange right on the top. And this figure has a head shaking action for roaring. 
This is a pretty big winged dinosaur. This is the Roarivore Pteranodon. This figure has a dark blue body with the red and white wings, and it's got a button on its back for the wing flapping. This is the Legacy Collection Velociraptor with the jumping action. The legs are spring-loaded, so when you press down on its body, it'll actually spring up into the air. And this is a super bright Velociraptor. I love the bright orange on this figure. Next up is the Battle Damage Triceratops. This is a smaller figure. It's green all over its body. It's got a little bit of light brown on the top. And most importantly, it's got the Battle Damage on the side that you can flip open and closed. Looks like we got a few more pteranodons in here. First one is a light gray color. It's got some dark blue detailing on the wings and on the face, and it's got a button on its back to flap its wings. And this second pteranodon is a dark green color with yellow accenting. And just like the other, it has a button on its back for flapping the wings. Here is another basic figure. This is Velociraptor Blue. This figure is about medium sized and it's fairly adjustable, but since it's a basic figure, you only can do so much with the arms and the legs. Over here, we've got the Roarivore Baryonyx. This has a light brown body with a dark blue gray coloring on top. And the coolest part is this reflective blue right along the top of its head. Plus this figure has an action button on its back for chomping and roaring. Here is another Baryonyx figure, but this one I believe was actually part of a Lava Surge playset. This one has the bright orange coloring on the top of its nose, while the rest of its body is light brown and dark blue gray, just like the other one. And of course, it's got the action button on its back for chomping and roaring. Here is the Roarivore Metriacanthosaurus. This has a green yellow coloring along the side and bottom with a darker green along the top and it's got a button on its back for chomping. Right over here is the Roarivore Triceratops. This has a clay red color with the brown detailing along the top, and it's got a button on its back for the roaring. This figure is the Roarivore Ankylosaurus. It has the dark brown underbelly, it's got some green detailing along its shell and the gray and the white spikes too. And this figure has the button for swinging its tail back and forth. Let's see how many battle damage figures we have in here. I think I found four. I think that's about it. Let's check them out. This first one is Apache Cephalosaurus, the green body and the orange top. And of course the battle damage right there on the side. Next up, we've got a yellow Velociraptor with brown detailing along the top and the battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. As well as another Velociraptor, looks like Velociraptor Blue with the battle damage on the side. And finally, a green Herrerasaurus with the battle damage on the side and a little bit of orange brown detailing along the top. We've got tons of Velociraptors in here. Let's check these out. This first one is a blue and gold Velociraptor, and on its head is actually pretty reflective, which is awesome. Then up next, we've got the classic Velociraptor blue figure, and of course you can open and close its jaw and move many of its limbs around. Then we've got this red Velociraptor and this green Velociraptor. Both have movable limbs, and you can open and close both of their jaws too. Here we've got a few Dilophosauruses. This first one is light green with the yellow and red frills in the front. It's got some brown coloring on its back. And this second Dilophosaurus is a dark brown color with blue detailing on the back and its frills are white and like a dark green color. Next up, we've got the green Minmi figure. This figure has spikes all over the top of its shell for protective covering. And it looks like we've got a couple more Dimorphodons in here too. This one has the gray and maroon coloring just like the one we saw earlier at the beginning of the video. And this figure is dark green and has orange and red coloring along its wings. That's pretty cool. I definitely like this coloring better. This I believe is a Protoceratops. It's got the light blue coloring with the yellow detailing along the top. 
Here is another jumpin' Velociraptor figure. This one is a bright blue coloring. And just like the other Velociraptor figure, you can press down on its body to bend the legs, and then you let go to let it spring up into the air. Next up is the Stiggy Milok Stiggy. This figure has the super hard head with the spikes right behind it, and you can move its arms and its legs and its tail too. We've also got a few Gallimimuses in here. This first one is a blue-gray color with darker coloring along the top, and it has adjustable legs, arms, and a neck. This second figure is a bit different. Its coloring is a bit more detailed all over its body, plus it's got an action button on its back to run its legs. And the final one is a light tan Gallimimus with darker brown detailing along the top, and just like the others, you can move the legs, the arms, and the neck. This is the Legacy Collection Pachycephalosaurus, and this figure has the head ramming action. And last but not least is the Proceratosaurus. It's a smaller figure with a dark brown coloring with a lighter underbelly, and it's got that red detailing right along its nose, and you can open and close its jaw and move its arms and legs. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.